Hey guys, it's May May. On the other side of this slimline card base is a card that I made that is a hot mess, okay? All of our projects are not masterpieces. Some of them are just really embarrassing. And I'm going to be honest with you, this one's embarrassing. But I had this technique in my head I wanted to try. I pushed it to its limits and it did not work. And I thought, you guys have to see this because everybody makes mistakes. And so I hope you enjoy this video. Tell me in the comments. Maybe you don't think it's a mistake. I feel like it totally messed up. I think even at one point in the video, you can hear where I changed my attitude about this card. But I hope you enjoy my mistake. And I hope maybe you learn a technique from it. I don't know. You might. In the comments below, be honest. Tell me what you think. It's okay. I know how it looks. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, it's May May and today we're making a fuss. Remember my Make a Fuss card series? Today we're really going to spend some time on this one, but I think it'll be fun. I'm going to focus on these flowers. I think these poppies are so pretty and I have an idea. I actually got this idea from a recent workshop I attended. So I went through some classes and I really enjoyed what this teacher did. So I'm going to try to uh, replicate it. Not replicate it, but use the technique. The technique is basically... Um, kind of popping out a focal point. You'll see as we get going. So what I'm going to do first, and this was not what she did. I'll show you what she did. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make for myself a mask of these flowers. So I'm using some Brutus Monroe masking paper. You can see here, that's what this is. And I'm going to stamp my flowers down and then I'm going to cut that out. Um, and I'm going to use that. I think I might need it. Honestly, I may end up not needing it. And if I don't, it's not a big deal. I can use this later, but I'm going to cut this out and see if we need it. So I got my mask all cut out. So this is on sticky paper. You can do this with a post-it note too, if you have like, um, post-it note paper or really any kind of paper, but I like that it has the adhesive for the next step we're going to do. Now I need to do something. I need to clean this stamp and I'll show you why I've used it and it's real dirty, but I want to make sure it's super clean before I move on to the next step. I'm cleaning this with my Nuvo stamp cleaner, and here's the thing. I've got to make sure this is super clean because I'm going to stamp this with a pale ink, and I want to be sure none of that black that I have been using ends up on my page. That feels pretty good. I feel like there's a little bit on the kind of inset, but it's not on the part we'll be stamping, so we're all right. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to second generation stamp with this pale gray ink. Now this ink is already gray, right? But it's not pale. It, it shows up really well. It's a beautiful color actually. So what I'm gonna do is on a piece of scrap paper, I'm gonna stamp off one time and I'm not gonna be super heavy handed with the stamp off. I'm just gonna sit it there and kind of take that off and then lift this up. And see, I can use that for another project. And now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna lay it like this on the page and get that second generation gray. So listen, it's going to be super pale. Like you may not even see it very well. Probably on camera, you'll see it real well because camera usually shows light colors really good. But in real life, it's super pale and that's what we want. Now I'm gonna take that mask. I've peeled the backer off. Okay, this is the mask we made earlier. And I'm gonna stick this down. And I really only need it to be where I'm fixing to overlap because I'm gonna overlap the stamp. So I'm not looking for like this perfect coverage all the way around, just where the stamp's gonna overlap. So there's that. And now I wanna do the same thing. I'm gonna ink this guy up and I'm gonna ink him off, second generation stamping. That's what this is called when you stamp in one place and then you stamp in another. And we're using the second generation. All right, I'm gonna flip this guy this way and stamp this here. I'm just of the opinion if I'm gonna be stamping it, I can do it on this cardstock and be able to use it again, right? Instead of just scrap paper. So I'm just stamping that one off there. Okay, now I want this flower to continue. So I'm gonna come this way and sort of connect them and just keep going down the page. Now here's what I need to make this card happen, okay? I need one of these images to be full, and this one is. This is probably gonna be the one I use. Um, and you'll see why when we get to it. So make sure I get that stamped well. And again, you're barely gonna see it. That's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna peel this up and we're gonna use this again. I'm being super careful because I don't wanna tear anything. Okay, so you see how our flowers are continuing in that pale color. Now I'm gonna cover this one up and do the same thing again until we go off the page. 
And see how beautiful that is? So pale, you can probably barely see it. Now what I can do with my mask, I can do one of two things. First, we wanna cover this ink. We don't wanna be wearing it. <clears throat> one of two things. I can put it back onto my little mask paper or I can take my stamp set. Let me show you how you can do this. And I can turn it over um, with the stamps facing down and I can stick this down to here. And what that does is, it has it, it leaves it there for me for next time. So when I put this stamp away, I have my mask for next time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just stick it down to my backing paper and then just slide that into my stamp pocket that I store my stamps in and I'll have everything together and it'll still be on its own little backer there. So there's that, we'll put that away for next time. Okay, let's get back to the card making. Now, admittedly, mine is a little splotchy. I'm okay with that. And what I mean by that is in some places I got more ink off than than other places. And really, I would love it if it just looked like this, this kind of light, light pale here in the middle. I'll try that again next time. But now I need to stamp one more of these guys. But this one, I need to stamp for watercolor. So I'm going to use the same ink for this one. And I'm going to ink it up. And I cannot decide if I want to do a second generation or if I want to just have full gray ink on this one. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to stamp it twice, okay? So I'm gonna get the full image here and we'll decide. So the full image, make sure I get all that ink. And then the second generation image, I'm gonna stamp right here and I can decide which one I wanna use as I get going. Okay. I might wanna use this one, I'm not sure, we'll see. Let's color both of them. Now, honestly, I don't really know why I'm doing this to myself because I'm a terrible watercolorist. I mean, terrible, but we're going to see what happens. <laughs> so I'm going to play with color a little bit and I'm going to be simple with color because I'm not good with color. So I'm going to pick like this yellow and maybe this pink and maybe this purple. Okay. These are my Nouveau watercolor pens, by the way, and then our brush pens. And I'm going to use my Aquaflow here and I might even use this paler yellow instead of this dark yellow. And again, I am really bad at this, but we're going to see what happens, okay? And then I've got this green, and I'm going to be simple, simple, simple. The point behind this is this one is going to pop. It's going to be our color, um, the color of the card, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in this flower. Now, I used this recently. Let me make sure. It looks a little green. So you can see where I've been using it with green. So let's squirt this off and make sure. Nope, we're not getting any green. We're good. All right, I want to put a little color, a little water in here. Now, let me say this. This is not watercolor paper. I was gonna use watercolor paper, and the reason I didn't is because my watercolor paper is not white, and I think I need the white because my background is, so I'm gonna use this instead. So let's go to the lemon zest color, and I'm gonna put down a little bit of lemon zest in here, and I'm gonna play with the color and leaving some white. So anywhere where the flower would be a little thick or a little chunky or a little shadowy, I'm gonna add the color, and I'm going to leave some of that white. This is why I didn't want to use a watercolor paper because I felt like the color wouldn't do exactly what I wanted. So now I'm going to go back to my clear or my water. Just kind of dot that around. And my friend Brenda, who is a fine artist, a watercolorist, <laughs> told me, use the white. Use the white part. Let it be a color. Like, use it as one of your shades. Now I think I'm going to come in and just kind of tip these petals just at the very top. You know, some flowers have these variegated colors. Just gonna tip it, and this is watercolor, so we're not looking for like super, super solid coverage. All right, same thing here. I'm gonna put some water down on this one. Not as much as I did on that one. I went real heavy on that one. Um, so I'm just gonna put some down here just to kind of get us going. And I think I wanna use the pink on this guy. A Little bit of water there. Let's go into this pink. And I'm going to come in where it would be shadowy. Oh, this color's not very pink. It's more peachy, but that's okay. I love a peach because I'm from Chilton County and we have peaches here. So that's good. So I'm going to come in to where it would be shadowy, like where the petals meet each other. And I am just dabbing in a little bit of this color. And then I'll go back and try to bring some of that out with my watercolor, with my water brush. Now, you don't have to go directly to the surface. You could put this paint down on like an acetate sheet on an acrylic block. You could put it down on a laminated sheet, and then you could pick up the color. 
but this works for me for what I'm trying to do because I'm really not being very good at this. <laughs> this is to show you that if I can do it, you can do it because I am no watercolorist. All right, some of these petals have this little place where they've kind of folded over and I'm going to go ahead and turn that the whole, the solid color just for a little interest there. Like this petal's got a big old fold over mark on it. And then I'm gonna come in here and get some color in. And I may go back on this one and add to the tips as well, I'm not sure. But see how adding that color, just a little bit. You don't need much, don't go crazy. Just a little bit. Now I'm gonna come in with some water and see if I can lighten it or drag some out. This is not watercolor paper, so it's not gonna react that way. They're gonna be a little stiffer, if that makes sense, like the colors aren't gonna run as well because this paper is just kind of grabbing it, but any bit of run is better than none. Just soften that up. And it kind of softens, you think it's not moving, but if you just give it a second, it does kind of soften. Another thing is you can squirt a little water out on your surface and kind of pick it up if you need a little more water on your brush. And look how pretty, I mean, you don't want much. You don't want much, you gotta remember that. Now this color might be super dark. We'll see this purple. So I need to go back to that brush. I'm gonna pick up some of that water I have laying there. I'm gonna get this little guy a little wet. Get him a little wet. Come in with this color. Do the same thing at the base of the flower. And then anywhere the petals overlap each other. All right, let's add a little more water to that just to get that to run around. This one's running pretty good. I want to use some of that white again. Brenda told me to do it, so I'm leaving some of that white. All right, now I'm going to go to the green and do the leaves. Now, you could do two colors of green if you wanted to. I think that may take me forever if I did that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some petals at a time. So I'm going to start with these leaves, pick up this green, and maybe just run down the vein a little bit because this green is dark and also very juicy. I got this green all over me the last time I used it, and I'm doing it again because it's super juicy. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit here, a little bit here, maybe to the tips, that's up to you. Just kind of lay in some color, just like that. And then I'm gonna come back in with my water brush and move that around a little bit. Let that kind of loosen up. I'm not looking for solid coverage, just looking for color, okay? These leaves will take me a minute. I'm gonna do that and we'll get right back together. Because my green is so loose, it's wanting to go everywhere, I'm just gonna dip in put a little on a block, and I'm just gonna dip in and use that. And then I have a second um, Aquaflow brush, a second water brush, and I'll use that to kind of move it around. Now I have a couple of buds here that I'm not gonna dilute. I'm just going to color them yellow to give them just a little pop. So I'm not even gonna add, I just want them to kind of pop right there. So I'm gonna do that one in that color and do the other bud in the color that I did the big flower in the middle. Because I feel like these being smaller will have a little more con concentrated color on them, maybe. So I'm just going to do that and let those kind of pop. Bring that out of the center there. So that's it. I'm not looking for a lot of color. That's kind of the point of this. Just something soft. I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to fussy cut it out. Now, while that is drying, we're really going to make a fuss. <laughs> so I'm using my Spectre Noir that is IG1. And this is optional. And this was not part of the technique. I just think this will be beautiful. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this pale gray color. I'm going to touch the nib next to the stamped image and flick. Touch and flick. And what I'm doing is I'm basically inking the edges. Not really. I'm inking the outside as if we had a layer on here. I want this to look, I want these second generation uh, images to pop off the page like I have a shadow. And this is how I'm doing it without having to cut all of these out, right? So this way, and you'll see how it's going to start to pop off the page. Let me bring it up. Now, this gray will dry a little lighter than you see here. But see how pretty that'll be? And it'll add to that watercolor feel. So I'm going to do that all the way around this image. Touch and flick, touch and flick, touch and flick. No, nothing fancy, no special technique. Touch and flick. And the touch makes the ink lay down a little thicker at the stamp. And the flick gives you that soft uh, look on the outside. Told you, it's a make a fuss card. It's going to be gorgeous, though. Look at that. That's going to be so pretty. I'm going to keep going. Can you see the difference in the two sides? It is so faint. 
but this creates such dimension. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to bring it up to the camera because I hope that you can see that. So much dimension and there's nothing to it. It's not nearly as long of a process as you think it is, but it literally makes those flowers glow. All right, I'm going to go around and do the other side. So I'm calling that the touch and flick technique, not the bend and snap. You're familiar, I'm sure. Okay, now what I'm going to do is through the middle, anywhere that there should be the background showing through, like especially right through here, I'm going to color that. So I'm just going to take this marker, that the same one we've been using, and I'm going to color that in, which will help these flowers to pop off the page even more. So anywhere where there's not really a petal or a leaf or something where they kind of separate from each other, just gonna color that in and create even more depth in the, in the background. This is one of those techniques where you don't see the results until you finish and you back up and look. And now it is like it has brought that image completely off the page. I hope this is translating on camera. It doesn't feel like it to me, but I hope it is. Okay, now let's go to our watercolored image and hopefully it's dry. It's pretty dry. It's still a little damp. What you can do is you can heat set this, but you want to be careful with heat setting it because I noticed I missed a spot in my fussy cutting because you don't want to um, curl it up any worse than it is. And a lot of times if you use your heat brush to do it, I tell you what I think would be great, and I want to try it. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to try using my mini heat press from Cricut and see what it does. If, see if it acts like an iron. So let me go get that, and we'll try it. So this is Vince's mouse pad that I took from him. <laughs> and this is my mini heat press. Let's turn this little dude on. I'm going to turn him all the way up. Is that dangerous? Let's do it. Let's do midway. <laughs> and I'm going to let that heat up for a second. If you don't have one of these, they make these little mini irons that I've seen in different places. You could use a little mini iron. You could use your real iron for that matter. But I thought this might be cool and it might be a great option when we have dyes that maybe curl up on us sometimes or when we pull things off a Cricut mat. Um, I'm going to try ironing this guy. So let's let it get hot. By the way, it comes with a little stand. Isn't that cute? I love it. So I'm going to set that right there and we'll get to that in just a second. Isn't this a make a fuss card for real though? Okay, she beeped, so let's try it. I'm gonna turn this over, and I'm going to iron this guy and see if I can get it to go flatter. Look at that. <laughs> That's great. That is great. One more hit, and then I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it under my mouse pad. By the way, I took this mouse pad from Vince. This is trail cameras or something. I don't know what this is. I just took it from him. So let that cool under there. This guy's cool. Let's turn it off. There we go. Put it aside to cool. Now look how smooth and flat that is. That's cool. It's a little curled on the edges, but look, like it's much flatter and it doesn't have that kind of bumpily texture that it had before. Love that. Okay, back to our card. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to put this guy right here. We're not going to glue it straight down. We're going to pop it up for some dimension. But do you see how cool that is? How the colors kind of run and the gray, like this is the pop from the middle. It's so pretty. It's very different. Like I, I've never tried this before, but I thought it'd be fun. Now I'm about to use a lot of foam squares because I want this guy stuck down well. But if some of those leaves curl up a little bit, I don't think that's going to hurt my feelings much. I think I really like that actually. Let's see how many of these guys I need. So I put a lot of foam on there. Might be some overkill, but I really want this to stick well. So I'm going to lay it over the one I want it to uh, bring out, you know, bring the dimension to. So it's this guy here. Just look how pretty that is. It looks like we just decided to color just one of them, which you could do. You could just color one. That would be fine. And I also love how all of the shading um, has just really popped behind it. I may even put another layer. I don't know. I'm really spending some time on this guy. I'm gonna take my scallop punch, my scallop corner punch, and I'm gonna punch this with the scallop. I just think that'll be so pretty. And when you're making these slim lines, when you do this, it almost looks like you have a die because it makes this feel like it was a die cut piece. I don't think I got that one quite like I wanted it. There we go. And then that changes the look of that. Now let's put this to the card base. So this is my card base. I need to score it. And the halfway mark of this is three and three fourths. So, move that out of the way. The other day, I cut something in half because I just used the wrong blade. It was so funny. Funny and kind of, oops. <laughs> so, there's that. We'll fold this and score or crease it. 
I'm going to add this piece to it. Do I want to pop it up? Do I want to lay it flat? Do I want to ink the edges? That's another question. Do I want to ink? I don't know that I do. I kind of like the movement of the color, but I'm thinking I might ink those edges. I got to study on it for a minute. So I'm running around the edge with my marker and just kind of sloppily adding some gray, just the tiniest little bit to kind of mimic like a watercolored edge. Just a little bit, not much. Again, on camera, this is gonna be pale. I'm gonna have to take some really good pictures of it. So you guys will even be able to see it good. So I put some foam on the back and I'm gonna pop this up on our card. That'll add another layer of light, another layer of dimension. And now I have another idea. I'm gonna take the aqua shimmer. I'm gonna put some on my work surface. That's how I like to do it. I'll put a little on my work surface and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna shimmer this one just so these don't feel like an afterthought. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna tap that on. And I'm noticing that it is making my pigment move. Hmm, could have messed this up. Did not realize that would do that. So if you're doing this yourself at home, this is gonna make that pigment ink run. Learn something new every day. I actually might not dislike the look because I feel like it kind of mimics the watercolory look, how it's kind of breaking it down. So this could be a happy accident. It could be just a really bad accident. <laughs> but you guys, this is how we learn, right? This is what we do. We play, we have ideas, and we just play around. Um, I actually do think it's looking kind of cool the way it's kind of breaking that down to look more like watercolor. That was the thing that I didn't love about it was how crisp this was compared to uh, the watercolor flower. Let's just do it and see what happens. Let's just finish this process. Let's go with it. What does, e what does every artist ever tell you? Don't quit. Keep going and see how it looks. I don't know why I didn't realize that this would move my pigment ink. I guess I've never used it on pigment before. Okay, let's work on a sentiment for the card. So I'm going to take my Onyx Black, and I'm going to use the sentiment that says, you're beautiful inside and out, and then I'm going to use the word friend. So you're beautiful inside and out right there. And then friend. I'm just going to pick this up. Okay, we're going to stamp the word friend right here. Just like that. I love this stamp set. It is so good for just everybody. All right, now I'm gonna cut this down. I'm just gonna use my trimmer to help me out here. Let's lay that cut line there. It's pretty good. Let's try the top. I pulled this piece out of the scrap bin and it's got a little pink on it, but I just cut it away, so that's good. And now this needs to be three and a half inches. I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna take off the difference because I don't want it to be, um, I wanted it to be off center. So that's why I was gonna take it off from that end. All right, let's go back to the card. And that will go right there. I think it will. And I think I'll do some punches on the corners here too. Let's, let's bring this out. Or do I wanna do the stub on this one? Let's do the stub. Let's do a little different. Let's make it look like a little tag. So the stub here and here. And then I think I need to bring that marker back in and do the same edging to it. And I'm gonna put this one right down here. I think that'll be so pretty. I think I should pop it up only because um, I don't know that it's gonna lay good and flat if I don't. I normally wouldn't because I have a lot of dimension on here, but I think it has to be popped up. So let's do that. Because I feel like it's still a little wet underneath, I'm gonna add a little art glitter glue there just as a safety precaution for it to stick down good. Because I feel like my glitter is still a little wet underneath there. Put this kind of low. Like that. And I cut a panel to go on the inside. I'll show you that. I just cut a white panel that will go right here. That way you can stamp or decorate or what have you, but I'm not gonna do it. What I'm gonna do is leave this piece in here so when I decide who's gonna get this card, if anybody's gonna get this card, then I can stamp it or fill it out later, but I'm just gonna sit it inside there for now 
so I've got it. But I wanted to show you what you do whenever you have a dark uh, card base like that. But that is it. Now, I have to tell you something. I'm not loving this card. <laughs> I don't love it. I think I spent a lot of time on it. I didn't get the effect that I wanted. I like some of the techniques I did, but it's not my favorite. I'm hoping when it completely dries and sets, I'll like it better. But it's not my favorite card. I even contemplated not showing it to you. And I thought, no, because you guys have to see that even when we design things, sometimes they don't work. Like this was in my brain. And some of you guys are going to love this card. Some of you are like, this is so cool. And some of you guys are not. I think what I would have liked better is if I would have cut this like one, two, three times. If I'd have cut it three times, colored it three times, and then ran it, that I would have liked better. I think that would look better. So do maybe stamp this like this on a piece of cardstock, then fussy cut that out, then watercolor the whole piece, and then stick the whole piece down because the watercoloring is my favorite. I love this section. I think if it ran all the way down, it would be, look good. If y'all want me to do that, if you want me to redeem myself on this card, tell me to in the comments and I can go back and do that. I'm going to post this video and I'm going to be sad about it. So listen, here's what I need you to do. I need thumbs up just to say you support my efforts. <laughs> At least she tried, right? At least she tried. So there you go, guys. That is me trying to mimic this technique. And to be honest, I'm not going to share with you who gave me the technique because I feel like I did a poor job on it and I don't want to I don't want to make them look bad. But the technique was taking a scene, pulling an image out and coloring only the image and kind of having the black and white scene. And this one just didn't work for me. I hope some of you guys like this card. Tell me in the comments. Give me some support. If you try something that you don't like and you're brave enough to share it with us, share us with it on Discord. Come over to the Discord. We have a little crafty chat room. Come over there and share it with us and go, look, I tried and it didn't work. Everybody does it, right? This is my attempt. So thanks so much, guys. Be sure to subscribe. You never know when I'm going to mess something up again. You want to be a part of that one too. <laughs> thanks so much for being here today, guys. And until next time, bye now.